Intention to Treat Estimate or ITT. Under some assumptions, the difference in means is called the Intention to Treat Estimate, ITT. Until now, we have supposed that everyone, 100% of the households in the treatment group, took the credit. They had access to credit through the program. In this image, the household heads became purple because of the treatment. Clearly, no one in the control group, 0%, had access to credit. However, when you offer microcredit, not everyone takes it. Some people don't use the credit. It also happens that some people in the control group are actively looking for credit. They contact, let's say, a local lender, apply for credit, and obtain it. Or sometimes there are ethical issues that bring you to this situation. Suppose that you are evaluating a deworming program. When you are sure, you have no doubt that the kid has worm, the medical protocol obliges you to treat the kid, to give the available medication. It does not matter if this kid was assigned to treatment or control group. You cannot deny the available health service in this case. In a good evaluation, crossovers are small. This means that most of the households assigned to the treatment group benefit from the program, and most of the households assigned to the control group do not. Let me introduce a new variable in the follow-up data, D. D is an indicator that takes the value of 1 if a household took credit and 0 if it did not. In our graphic, receiving the treatment D makes household heads purple. Notice that there is a difference between being assigned to treatment and control, that's D, the variable that puts the household randomly into the two circles, and actually obtaining the credit or the program, that's the variable D, which colors the heads on purple. With a double entry table of T and D, we can see that there are 150 households in the control group. T equals zero. 139 did not have access to credit as it was supposed to be, but 11 households managed to get credit somehow, maybe from a relative or a local lender. Among the 150 households assigned to the treatment group, 135 did get credit as planned. 15 of them did not get credit, maybe they just declined the offer. This is a huge take-up rate, but remember that we are working with fictitious data. To observe the treatment D in terms of proportions, we can summarize the variable on each assignment group. By sort T, summarize D. About 7% of the households who were not supposed to get credit had access to it anyway, and 90% of the treatment group who were offered credit by the program actually made use of it. This is the huge take-up rate I was talking about, 90%. When you offer this kind of program, you are probably interested in the effect of having access to microcredit versus not having access. Once the credit is available, you expect some households to take it, but not necessarily all of them. That's fine. You also expect that even in the absence of your program, some families look for credit sources and obtain it from somewhere else. The difference of means estimate the program effect as the program is. In this case, the difference of means that we calculate is called the intention to treat estimate, the ITT. This is the estimated impact of offering credit and is different from the impact of actually obtaining credit versus not obtaining. If you're interested in that measure, you probably want to adjust the randomization process and randomize households that are ready to take credit, that are already looking for it. This type of randomization will be a little bit more difficult to implement in practice though. In conclusion, the ITT gives you an accurate measure of the program effect as it is. The ITT estimate is the difference of means between treatment and control group and it's 16.8% in our example.